guys welcome to this lecture and in this lecture we are going to learn about loops all right uh, see this is a very important concept all right because we are going to uh, use loops a lot all right we are going to use a loop uh, like loops a lot because whenever you will be developing something all right you uh, you won't be like uh, like every, you don't want to do everything manually right you, you can loop through it all right for example if you are um, Mm, what can I say? Let's say uh, if you are, uh, uh, let's say you uh, like created an array. All right, you created an array. I know you you might you you don't know the meaning of array as of now. All right, but that's totally okay. I would uh, like in in the next lecture only we are going to discuss arrays. All right, and for arrays we are going to uh, need loops. All right, we have to understand the uh, loops to like work with arrays. Right. So see we can use loops in multiple ways like for example uh, let's say uh, we want to apply some materials all right so I, i'm taking an example all right in terms of uh, ar uh, like the application we are going to make during uh, like after we learn euphoria right so the basic all right the basic understanding of uh, the basic concept of looping is to loop through something all right loop through something loop uh, see uh, the formal definition all right for loop would be loops are basically a way to you know uh, iterate over something for finite or infinite number of times all right so let's say for an example all right let's say for an example do you remember uh, i'm not sure if this happened with you uh, but this happened with me a long time back i was in like uh, you know in class 5th and at that, that point of time uh, i was in uh, like i i learned my first programming language all right that was q basic all right in class 5th i learned my first programming language and uh, you know uh, i got punishment at the, uh, at that time i was like uh, uh, like you know very you know, what can I say? I'm very naughty kid. I used to like you know uh, disturb my friends, and because of that, uh, what I got was uh, they the teacher punished me. Told me that you have to write uh, something. I exactly don't remember. I think it was uh, I'm sorry. You have to write I'm sorry a hundred times. All right, and uh, you know at that point of time, uh, I knew how to use for loops. Right, I I understood the concept of for loop. I understood. Uh, how to use it so then it came to my thought let's why not see the teacher is you know teacher is trying to tell us that you know uh, you have to write I am sorry a hundred times right and you know teacher just wants it a hundred times she didn't told me how to write like I have to write it manually or I can you know use uh, some dynamic way like uh, you using a for loop to iterate over uh, iterate over for hundred times and uh, print right uh, print I'm sorry right so what I did is all right what I did I basically I uh, use the for technique of for loop all right to you know iterate hundred times. I use the technique of for loop to iterate hundred times and print. Uh, I am sorry a hundred times. All right, it like it uh, completed in four to five lines. And uh, after I shown it to the teacher, the teacher you know scolded me a lot. All right, and then gave me uh, then told me that you have to write. <laughs> I am sorry two hundred times uh, for you know uh, manually. And after that, I never tried tried this with any teacher. All right. After that, actually, it, uh, I never got punishment from class six, so it never happened. So uh, in class five, this incident was, you know, was a very funny incident for me because uh, that was the first time I actually used for loop to save myself from, you know, writing the whole thing. So that's the concept of loops. All right, loop actually helps us to, you know, reduce uh, all, most of the work. Right. Like for example, uh, right now I can give you. All right. Hey brother, uh, write. You know. Hello world, a hundred times. All right. So you, right now you don't know the concept of loops, but you are a very obedient student, uh, and uh, you will start writing like a console dot uh, write line. All right. Hello world. Right. You will be writing that a uh, hundred times. Right. You will be writing that a uh, hundred times. All right. And that that's going to take a lot of time. Right. Uh, that's going to take a lot of time. 
so what we can do is we can use you know a loop all right we we can use a loop to actually do it for us a hundred times all right so that it uh, the computer will only perform the you know the function we don't have to do anything currently we are doing it manually but with a with a loop we can uh, like make our computer do the you know write the hello world all right so i will show you how to do that but before that let's understand what a loop so loops basically are a way to iterate over something for finite or infinite amount of time all right so you know first uh, let's understand how many types of loops are there all right see there are um, three types of loops all right that is let's first write it down in here all right the first type all right the very common used is for loop all right then another one is while loop and the third one is very least used all right uh, actually i really don't use this loop anymore like i don't need it all right but you have to you have to have an idea about do while loop right so may uh, that's why i'm teaching it right now although i don't think you will also be using do while loop in your career yet uh, but uh, i i never use like you know uh, whenever developing a, a applications i never use do while loop it never it never came handy to me whereas uh, i used for loop and while loop a lot right so that's why uh, i'm going to teach you all the three loops today all right and we are going to start with uh, for loop all right see uh, remember the concept of looping is sim sim simple all right concept of looping is simple it just tells that we are you know uh, repeating ourselves all right looping means repeating all right we uh, looping totally means repeating ourselves over something right so that's the concept of looping but there are three different ways to loop all right that is one is for loop another one is while loop and the one is do while loop all right and i would tell you all right when to use for loop and when to use while loop all right so make sure to you know listen to this lecture carefully so first of all let's understand the syntax of for loop the syntax of for loop is very simple all right so the first is we have to write for all right inside the for we have to give brackets and uh, the first all right the first would be you know first statement we have to write is start then we have to give a semicolon then we have to give a condition all right condition that for uh, how many steps we want to run means for for how many times we want to run right now the next would be all right the last one would be steps all right that is how many steps we want to take steps means how many you know uh, let's just say if we give step as 2 then uh, let's say we are trying to uh, print numbers from 1 to 10 right so let's say if we give step as 2 then it would only uh, like you know if we start from 0 then 0 plus 2 uh, let's say it would uh, give us 2 then 4 then uh, some uh, like it would give us like this all right then inside that we would be printing uh, like it we would be instructing the program to do something all right so this is basically the syntax of for loop all right now i told you you know my story of uh, how i was punished right now let's try to implement that punish uh, like let's try to implement that all right so for you have to declare a variable right so i'm going to declare a variable within the for loop only so for i equals 0 yeah it's uh, i'm remember that i am starting the value of i from 0 all right then i want to go till i less than equals 100 i want to go till 100 then i have to give how many steps i want to increment all right how many steps i want to go with so i plus plus means 1 all right every step will be incremented by 1 now if we if we want to you know uh, let's say if we want to increment every step by 2 what we can do is plus sorry plus equals 2 all right but for now plus plus is totally fine with us so now what you can write console dot write line hello world all right so teacher told us that student write hello world instead of i'm sorry all right so now let's see if uh, it is printed 100 times or not all right so you know there is not really a way to you know we are not able to count it right so let's uh, give a plus sign and you know 
add the i in here let's see now yeah so here you can see that it's starting from 0 and uh, it is going from 100 uh, going up to 100 now here you can see as it is starting from 0 the total number will be 101 all right because if 1 is starting from here then 0 is another extra one so it will be 101 times all right so to fix that we can actually start the loop from 1 or what we can do is we can you know mark it uh, like give the condition as i less than 0 then what will happen it would start from 0 and uh, end up to 99 so it would be total 100 uh, it would be total 100 times we looped all right so that's how we you know work with for loops so for loop is a way to loop through all right some sort of you know uh, some sort of condition now always remember we use all right we use for loop all right we use for loop when we know exactly how many uh, how many iterations do we want like right so for in this example we knew all right in this example we knew that we are going to need 100 all right we are going to need 100 iterations so that's what we did we uh, go we did 100 iterations in the program to print hello world so that's when we use for loop all right so now as we have understood the concept of for loop let's you know let's try uh, writing some program for it let's try solving some program program right i want you, you guys to try it first all right so pause the you know pause this particular video after i give you the question and try it by yourself then uh, come to this video and see the solution all right so i'm writing a comment in here let's uh, write a program to print <coughs> table of a number using for loops all right so what you have to do is you have to code a solution all right which will be able to print table tab, ta, uh, all right it will be able to print table of that number all right so make sure you do that and uh, right now pause the video and try it by yourself it's okay if you are not able to do it all right it just needs some more practice after uh, practicing you will be very familiar with the concept of for loop all right so let's try it out now all right so for i'm going to implement it so for c first of all uh, the very first thing i want you to is to declare a variable all right that is int n all right this would be the number all right that is i want to create a table of 2 all right so now what i want is for int i because I want to start from 0, alright, and I want to end up till 12, alright, and i++. Why? Because we aren't skipping any step, we are just incrementing by 1, alright, we are just, we just want one step each, alright. Now, create another variable, alright, that is int, let's, uh, you know, let's name it f, alright, and uh, what you have to do is, multiply all right this value of n all right with i see remember how this is working first of all in the first iteration the first iteration 2 is multiplied by 0 and the outcome is 0 in the second iteration all right how it is reaching to the second iteration it is reaching to the second iteration by incrementing this i by 1 all right so now in the second iteration i will be 1 all right i will be 1 and 2 will be multiplied by 1 and in the th again in the th third iteration it will be incremented and it will be go to 2 all right then again 2 will be multiplied by 2 so it will be working like this all right so i hope you understand how how this program will be working all right then console dot right line and uh, print the value all right and also make sure uh, you know write it like this so just wait in all right n plus give an asterisk in here all right and uh, plus i it's it's just an you know i'm just maintaining a decorum in here all right means i'm just actually uh, let's leave this thing all right we, we will try this one later on first of all let me show you if it is printing the table of two or not yeah it is 
of course printing so 2 zeros are 0 2 ones are 2 2 twos are 4 2 threes are 6 2 fours are 8 2 fives are 10 2 six are 12 and so on it is going up to 2 12 twos are 24 right so we have successfully printed the table of 2 now let's uh, you know print the table of 12 let's see if it is able to do it or not see 12 ones are 12 12 twos are 24 12 three are 36 and it is going up to 12 12 is 144 so that's how it is working all right that's how our for loop is working first it is remember it is iterating till the condition is met all right and for us the condition is 12 we exactly know how many times we want to iterate we know that we want to iterate it 12 times that's how we set uh, that's how we actually set up you know the condition so that it iterates uh, up to 12 all right now for each iteration it is incrementing the value of i that is uh, in the first iteration the value of i is 0 and uh, you know 12 is multiplied by 0 and it is printed and in the second iteration when it goes to a second iteration the value of i is incremented all right the value of i is incremented and this uh, 0 is changed uh, to 1 all right so and then uh, again in that iteration 12 into 1 equals 12 right so that's how this whole thing is working all right so i hope you understand how this worked right now i hope uh, you know for loop is uh, the concept of for loop is cleared because right now i'm going going to go to a uh, while loop so make sure if you are not uh, you know not clear with uh, the concept of for loop make sure you uh, practice it a little bit all right watch the uh, portion of for loop all right the one i taught right now so watch that again practice for loop all right then only go to while loop all right so make sure you do that so now let's uh, you know remove this whole uh, syntax thing and uh, let's mark for loop as done all right now here we uh, go to the for loop all right so what is for loop? while loop sorry what is while loop yeah see you can say while loop is a brother all right brother of for loop all right it is also used for looping all right but the thing is all right while loop all right while loop runs all right while loop runs till the condition is false all right it will run till the condition is false and this proves one of our concept that for loop is only used all right for loop is only used when all right for loop is only used if we don't know how many iterations we want all right that's when for loop is used all right as simple as that all right so now let's uh, you know learn about the syntax so let me comment uh, this out all right so this is the basic syntax we have to you know first uh, declare uh, a variable all right it's better to declare a variable at first then you know uh, write the while all right and in here the condition will go on all right actually this uh, you know this variable is not a part of uh, the syntax but i'm showing you because you would be needing it all right then curly braces and uh, inside that you have to you know do, uh, right do something all right so that's that is what the syntax of for while loop is all right now you know uh, i told you about the whole hello world example let's you know try to implement it so first of all i want you to declare a variable all right in i equals you know zero it should start from zero all right and give it a condition while all right while i is less than equals 100 all right i is less than equals 100 i want to print hello world all right i want to print hello world now one more thing all right in for loop remember how we were incrementing the value right 
do you remember that how we were incrementing the value by i plus plus similarly in here also we have to do something and we have to do that after all our statement is done all right that is for now our only statement is console dot hard right line and at the end we are going to write i plus plus all right now i will i will let you know what will happen if you don't give i plus plus but for now all right for now let's see what happens if we give it all right let's see uh, uh, the basic example see it is you know printing hello world till 100 all right it is printing hello world till 100 and it is stopping when the condition is becoming false all right it is stopping like uh, say uh, like see when it reached 100 when it reached 100 after when it was go it was going to 101 as the condition is not meeting as 101 is greater than 100 it stop looping all right so that's how it is working so let's understand first of all we declared a variable declared a basic uh, you know a basic variable all right we declared a variable i then we created a while loop in the while loop there is a condition i less than equals 100 now this condition uh, will be uh, re like uh, what can i say this condition is responsible all right for executing this uh, particular line uh, console dot write line all right and then we are going i plus plus that is incrementing the value of i by 1 all right that's what we are doing let's say if we you know let's say if we uh, remove this i plus plus let's see what will happen see it uh, you know this uh, particular website na sort of crashed for for a moment like it you know it uh, not exactly crashed but you know uh, what can i say it uh, freezed or it freezed for a moment all right and here you can see the well uh, you can't uh, everything in here is zero all right everything in here is zero and at the end here's a error that uh, range error all right range error max buffer length exceeded that's because all right that's because we ran into an infinite loop all right means it it is a never ending loop it won't end ever all right that's why the, uh, that's because we didn't give i++ the reason is what role is i++ playing is it is incrementing the value of i all right like for the first all right for the first iteration it performed this particular thing then we are incrementing to 1 all right since so then why is the second i uh, means then one all right then one is the second iteration in the second iteration means the second iteration completed we incremented the value of i now one has gone to two so like this all right like this we are uh, working on the for loop all right so if you don't give the i plus plus then what will happen then what will happen if we don't give the i plus plus then it will run into a infinite loop all right and of course we don't want that so that's how a while loop works all right so i hope you are clear with the concept of while loop all right and also one more thing we can uh, you know we can write uh, this i++ to i++ 1 i++ 2 let's try it out with i++ 2 also let's see what happens so you can see that uh, it is iterating even number of times like right? it is iterating half the number of times of 100 so that's how it is working all right so that's how we you know code uh, you know for loop all right now uh, let's all right Le uh, remember the uh, program which i i taught you like to print out a table of uh, a certain number right we are going to do the same thing with uh, with while loop all right so the very first thing i want you to understand is write a variable all right n The, uh, that would be containing the number then uh, write all right write a variable i it would be the counter counter variable means uh, the i that we had taught you all right it would be incrementing the value after each uh, successful statement right so now go to while i all right just wait while i all right is less than equals 12 all right what i want i want is to multiply all right multiply 
multiply the number n with i all right then after that i want to print it all right i want to print it console dot write line i want to print it then after printing it i want i i am going to increment the value all right i am going to increment the value by 1 so now let's see cool so we got the same output that we got for for loop right so that's how the uh, it is working all right so i hope uh, you are very clear with the concept of uh, for loop and while loop all right so i uh, you all i guess you also know how when when to use which right so we use for loop when we exactly know how many iterations we want and we use for loop oh, sorry did i oh sorry sorry i guess i messed it up so again we use for loop when we know how many iterations we want we use while loop when we don't know all right when we exactly don't know how many iterations we want so that's when we use for loop all right and a for loop statement stops working when the condition no when the condition gets to false all right so always remember that now here comes our last looping statement all right and uh, the least used ones all right this is known as do while loop all right it's a uh, see do while loop now is uh, you know very similar all right it is very similar to uh, what can i say a uh, while loop all right it is very similar to while loop just there is a one difference all right in while loop if the condition is false from the starting point now it won't even execute a single statement but in do while loop even if the condition is false all right it will all right even if the condition is false it will execute once all right it will at least execute once all right so let me first uh, make you familiar with uh, the concept of do while loop means the syntax of do while loop actually so i hope you are familiar with the concept of you know do while loop so do first of all you need to write do then curly braces all right inside the curly braces you have to you know go for uh, writing the you know particular code you want to give then you have to give a while statement in here then the condition in here to uh, to be executed all right so that's what the syntax is it's a bit weird syntax right i know i know so now what you have to do is define a i variable all right see we are going to uh, you know write the same example we did last time that is the hello world one so then write do write do all right then console dot write line hello world then i'm going to increment the count all right means increment the value of i i plus by i plus plus or you can also do i plus equals 1 all right then in the while all right i'm going to give the condition i less than equals no 100 and then semicolon now let's try to run it so here you can see we actually got the hello hello world now to verify that if we actually ran 100 times or not i'm going to you know uh, add i to the equation so now here you can see it has ran 100 times now you know what i told uh, you just uh, a few seconds ago that even if the condition is false from the starting point do while loop will at least execute once all right so you know let's uh, let's verify it all right let's verify it let's give if the condition is greater than equals 100 all right if the value of i is greater than equals 100 and of course the condition is false so here you can see here you can see with being all right even though the condition is false it at least executed once all right so that's what all right that's what a do that's what a difference between do while and while loop is all right and see you won't be using this uh, do while loop much i am very sure of that because uh, even uh, like i have been uh, like using unity engine for almost 4 years yeah 
so it's been almost i started in 2019 and it's been almost uh, four years i have been using unity engine and uh, it's been more like almost two years all right i guess two to three years i have been uh, doing augmented reality development all right so here's the thing all right i have never used do while loop all right i have never used do while loop while developing uh, games or ar applications so maybe in your case you might face uh, you know some moment where you have used uh, where you sh should use or can use do while loop so it's totally totally okay all right but in my case i never used uh, do while loop in my you know development journey so yeah that's it now here's something you know last all right here's the last uh, concept we are going to learn in the in this conditionals oh sorry not in this condition i guess i forgot to uh, change the name sorry i'm very very sorry so i'm going to change the name so uh, in this looping all right in this loop concepts we are going to learn this l last thing that is jump statements all right there are multiple jump statements in c sharp like there's go to there's break there's a continue statement then there is return statement all right then there is throw statement but in this uh, particular lecture we are going to learn about only two of them that is continue and break statement all right so they are very simple all right jump statements basically na they are a statement all right jump statements are basically a statement that instructs uh, uh, the fl flow of a program or that instructs the program to deviate from its normal flow sequence and jump to another line of code all right so jump statements are commonly used in loops and other control flow statements all right so you will also you, you know use this in switch case statements often in uh, if else statements all right so let's see what are these so first of all let me uh, show you uh, let me tell you which uh, statements we are going to learn today all right that is break all right we are going to learn about break and continue all right we're going to learn about break and continue so let's implement it so i'm going to use for loop for this all right you can try out with while loop do while loop anything you want all right so i'm going to uh, create a for loop all right i'm going to iterate you know uh, iterate this for loop over up to 10 all right i'm going to iterate uh, this for loop to 10 um all right now what i want to uh, give a condition all right let's say i want to print i'm uh, i'm printing all right all the, all the numbers in here so i'm going to print all the numbers in here and now i what i want if all right if uh, the i if i reaches to 7 all right if i reaches to 7 what i'm going to do is all right if i reaches to 7 what i'm going to do is i'm going to break all right i'm going to break so let's see if this works or not see it didn't print it it broke it broke the program all right after i reached to 7 it broke the program all right so that's what is it it is doing now basically uh, break statements now uh, after reaching some point now break statement helps us to terminate the whole program all right that's the whole point of break all right that's the whole point of break statement now here comes continue statement all right see continue statement is a bit different it will actually skip that particular value and move to the next value let me show you all right just give me a second so you guys might be thinking all right that i told you that continue statement skips some part right it, it skips some part and uh, then moves to the next one all right but here in the output it didn't happen right because all right because here you can see before the if statement this uh, console dot write line is being executed so in this case it already had printed 7 then how is it going to skip if if it has already printed it right so that's why to actually use the continue statement in this case what we do is we first of all we check for the condition and then we uh, write console dot write line and now here you can see that we are able to print up to 10 by skipping all right by skipping number 7 all right so that's how this whole looping 
works all right and i hope this concept is very clear to you all right so yeah that's it for uh, this lecture so see you in the next lecture thank you